All right. Hello and welcome to another Lifter LMS training. I'm here with Melissa Love from themarketingfix.co. You can also find her at the designspace.co and melissalove.co.uk. <laughs> Melissa is an awesome uh, longtime member of the Lifter LMS community. She's been using Lifter for a while. She's done a lot of great work in WordPress, uh, in the Divi community, in the photographer niche, and all kinds of stuff. She's been on our podcast. Uh, she's a case study on our site. Go check all that stuff out. Um, so first, welcome, Melissa. Thank you. I feel really honored to be here, actually. It's always lovely when one of your favorite tools, you get to come and talk about one of your favorite tools with nice people. So it's brilliant. Well, I'm, I'm, thanks for saying that. And uh, in many ways, I'm, the honor is all mine. In some ways, you complete uh, what we do at Lifter in the sense that we're primarily a plug-in like functionality shop and you bring like design and all this and you're like a coach and expert. Uh, so like we kind of complete each other, like together something amazing comes out the other side. So I'm really excited to get into it. This is going to be a interactive session. So Melissa's cool with taking questions as we go. There's a chat box here in Zoom. There's also a Q&A functionality if you want to use that. And uh, stay to the end, we are going to be doing a giveaway of a Lifter LMS add-on. So that's a $99 add-on. If you want to get something else uh, with that credit, you can, you can apply that to something else. But we'll do that drawing at the end. And uh, yeah, over to you, Melissa. Let's jump right into it. I'm so excited to see where we're going to go today, yeah. talking about design and the stuff that uh, you go deep on. Well, thank you very much. Very kind of you. Um, I think when Chris says... I bring design to the party. What I think he means is I'm the one that nags him constantly about various <laughs> <laughs> UI and UX features, which I'd like <laughs> design. So, um, what, but that saying that um, Lifter is a br brilliant plugin. And I do remember going back, uh, it must be four or five years ago. I was at, I was in Nashville at a mastermind with some friends who were all very brilliant marketers. And I remember sitting there with a couple other people who were at my stage, which was not very far on my journey in terms of marketing. And we were all going, but what do we do to sell courses? And what do we use? What are you using? What are you using? What this and the other people were like, they know you want to use this. And I just remember this massive thinking, I will never be able to move forward because I will not be able to choose because I'm, I get kind of tool paralysis where I just think I, I can't make a decision. What if it's the wrong one and I have to redo everything. So I do remember um deciding on Lifter and thinking right I'm all in for this because I think it's an amazing community and I think it's got the potential to do exactly what I want because it's it's very short code driven which I'll come to in in a moment but um and I, I just thought this is a company that listens so that's why I'm here very happy to come and talk to you guys because it's a fantastic community and I know Chris is very interested in the philosophy behind learning not just building a great tool and that's something I'm really into and anyone who runs their own course website will will probably be deep into those kind of books and that kind of learning as well that kind of so that's why it's great for us all to share um to share what we know about building great course websites as well as making the user experience really fantastic so um and that I'm, I'm not going to solely focus on design I what I've come at this is from the user experience the learner experience make it delightful so that doesn't just mean visually it can mean little touches personal touches which really delight people and make them feel like it's a, a very tailored experience so i'm going to see if i can share my screen hopefully i can yeah and i'm going to dive straight in so just could you give me a thumbs up that you can see that chris we got you okay well let's go into full presenter mode so yeah so my name is melissa um my company is the design space.co which was my my main my main or first company which sells wordpress um themes uh mostly for small creative businesses and lately i'm moving more into course creators and uh, um, online shops marketing templates things which are a bit more broader than just um the my previous niche which was photography still is very much so but um i'm broadening out a bit because i'm really loving being in the course creation kind of area and from this, um, and I'll, t I'll tell you my story from the beginning. So I actually grew up with two graphic designer parents, except it was such a long time ago that graphic design wasn't actually a thing. It didn't even exist. So my mum actually had one of those machines, an IBM Scale X trick. And if, that was a font, right? A golf ball font. So she would change the fonts and she would print it all out. And then my dad, and these, these are not my actual parents, 
for the sake of accuracy, wood. He was like, um, he was a graphic design part, but that didn't exist. He, this is what our spare bedroom looked like. He had a massive drawing board. He was a paste up artist. So he would take mum's type, cut it up on this board that we were never allowed to touch, even though it had loads of cool pens. And then he would stick it down on a board and take it to the print to the print shop and have it flown up into a plate. Then uh, they would print the plate, print off the film and then he would bring the film home and cut it up again. And, you know, if you made a form back then, you did it with a ruler and a pen. It was amazing. So I kind of got roped into the business when I was about 12 or 13. So um, I was a nerdy child. If anyone recognises that, um, if anyone's ever worked in typography, proofreading, checking leading and um, print measurements um, on a Pica ruler, and it, you know, you know it's very boring and I would be doing boring proofreading and um, it did mean I was a total nerd about design I could spot what I could tell you what size a font was from about 10 paces so I, I spent my whole kind of adolescence doing all these the crappy jobs that nobody wanted to do in their business but it was a very good grounding in design and um, I was very lucky my mum was one of the first people in the in the UK to use photoshop and back then cork express which is more known better known as kind of uh different programs really but she was she was kind of really on board early in the adobe world so i was very lucky to have all that training and obviously i didn't want to do anything that my parents did so i did anything but that for at least 10 years till and i finally um had my own family and thought mm, what can i do i'd been traveling the world being a snowboard instructor and generally not doing anything very useful and i thought and although i'd left home saying the thing i will never do is be a graphic designer working in my spare bedroom and yet here we are <laughs> <laughs> So it never entirely leaves you, but I did, my parents did very quite boring work, which they'll be the first to tell you they made medical catalogues and they didn't seem to enjoy it very much. Whereas I get to make beautiful websites and templates and generally have a fun old time. So I'm not complaining. Um, so this is me, this is the design space. I was a one-to-one -one, you know, custom website designer for a long time for photographers, got a little bit burnt out. Also, the more successful you become, you put your prices up, then you don't get to work with people who are just starting out, who are my favorite people to work with. I'd kind of price myself out of my favorite client market. And then, um, so I released this, which is um, beautiful templates for WordPress. So um, I then uh, I then built a course and that's when I first got into Lifter. And my course, because I realized I had these beautiful templates but people didn't really know what to do with them. They didn't know how to build their websites. So I thought I'll do a course for that. And then once, then I had a load of people who built beautiful websites. So they didn't know how to use them to market their business. So I thought, I know what I'll do. I'm going to turn my course into a membership and teach people how to market their business um, with kind of digital marketing, automated marketing, building an email list, Facebook ads, social media, all that kind of great stuff. And I also, because I'm not busy enough at all, last year I, um, I became a co-owner of three different plugins in the WordPress space. One of them is Sitepresser, which is for packaging up WordPress themes for sale, giving you a beautiful one-click installer. And that also includes Page Builder Cloud and Layouts Cloud, which are, if you use a page board like Elementor or Divi, that gives you your own cloud storage so you can save layouts to the cloud and just grab them down into any site you're working on. So I have a lot of plates in the air, but they all do seem somehow work together fairly seamlessly. Um, so that's me and that's what I do. And I wanted to tell you that story about um, my parents because if you look at your website, which most people do, and especially if it's got a bit of a technical back end, like a course website, um, it's very easy to get discouraged, but I'm here to, I'm living proof that design skills are learned and not innate. I didn't grow up, um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't a precocious three-year-old who picked up a mouse and started designing websites. My parents drilled it into me um, for years and years and years. So if I can learn it, you can learn it. Um, and I was determined not to learn it. So you've got every chance in the world. And I think this is what, if you have made the decision to choose a website system like WordPress, it does come with its own special set of challenges, but the rewards are so much greater. So a lot of people try and then they go, screw this, I'm gonna go and try Kajabi or, or, or I don't know if I'm allowed to say these, these other names out loud, but you know, other online learning platforms, which we shall not mention, which are non-WordPress based. I get that. So, however, you know, if you think about WordPress five years ago, which was agonizing, you know, the world of page builders has opened up design, democratized it, made it a lot more of a, I'm gonna, I call it Squarespace style, but drag and drop, a much better interface. And what a lot of people miss is that you can, they think, oh, well, I can design my main pages with the page builder, but, you know, I still have to stick with the, the, the outputs that my plugins, you know, look like, the ugly Wo WooCommerce checkouts and the, the, you know, the output 
that, that Lifter puts out, but we don't have to. We can, there's some really great hacks. I'm going to show you those because I, I want you to be reassured that anyone can do this. I've also got some free downloads for you at the end. So you can grab my layouts and I've got a free course for you. So all of that good stuff is on its way. So this session is for you if you want your, your LMS to look beautiful, your learning management system to look beautiful. And um, I am, I will not sacrifice good design for functionality as Chris knows, I'm such a bore. I'm always, put every, every question I've ever posted in the group is about how do I make this look better? What's the way around this, make it look better? Can this be made look, to look more beautiful? So I'm, I'm on your side. If you're, if you're about, all about the visual, I'm right there with you. Um, if you want to also improve your learner experience to increase engagement and retention, and believe me, this has been, a, I'm a year and a half into a membership, and this has been, um, it's not all been a smooth path. I'm going to tell you all my mistakes so you can avoid them, and some little hacks which really help people um, get on board with you and, you know, help create loyalty. So this is how I started. This is, I'm going to borrow this, how it starts, how, it, how it's going mean, to talk to you about what you may be going through. And I'm just going to make sure I've got my chat up. One second. So I can see what you're saying. Yeah. So um, I've worked, I can see a question already. I'm going to park that and we'll come back to that um, when we get to that part in the presentation. So when you open your course doors, I, <laughs> you're like, come on, come on board, everybody. I've thought it all out and it's going to be wonderful. And you have this idea of how they're all going to interact with your website and it never normally works out that way. You know, suddenly people start running around, jumping overboard, climbing ladders. You're like, guys, stop it. You're not meant to do that. No, you do this first. And they're not listening to you and they're not follow you, <laughs> following your instructions. And this is what it actually ends up feeling like is this, like you're kind of running around trying to clear a pathway and make it look like you meant it to happen that way. And um, you're trying to ease their path and kind of make it a great experience for them. But often it's like you're doing it behind the scenes going, oh my God, why is that broken? And why are they going there? How did they find that? And that's meant to be a member only page. And, you know, I know what that's like that when you launch and I had a, I was lucky, I had a big launch. We kind of quickly got up to around the 350, 400 member mark within a couple of months. And I was like the curling people like crazy. Things were breaking. I was changing things. People were like, I'm just so overwhelmed. I'm leaving. I, I've been, I went to Helen back in those first few months. I had aut email automations sent spamming thousands of people with the wrong thing. So um, I've made all the mistakes, believe me. So before we get too deep into why I made some of the decisions I made with my site, I'm just going to, you know, and apologies, I, I would say you guys are pretty high level. So I'm sure you've probably heard these terms, but I always think it's useful to recap if anybody hasn't. So I'm, uh, I'm all about the user experience. And this is also a technical term. So the user experience is how someone feels when they're interacting with your site. So this graphic always makes me laugh. It's kind of a funny one that I've seen used lots of times, but you know, we might design people to walk around the path, but they're just gonna cut straight across because it's better for them. And they will do that in your course site. And you'll be like, God. And in the end, you just have to, you become the person with the curling, you just have to go with it. You have to, what they wanna do, you have to make it easier for them. So um, there's a couple of things you can and should do if you're struggling with your UX here. Um, there's a couple of tools I use. Mouseflow is great. It's, um, it's you pop a little bit of code in your site and you can see a live heat map of how people are moving around. So I had a massive onboarding crisis where people couldn't find stuff. Like hundreds of people were going, it's too overwhelming. And considering my slogan is banish marketing overwhelm and everyone's like, I'm overwhelmed. I was like, oh God, this is a disaster. <laughs> So I got my mouse flow out and I literally sat there watching as people onboarded. I watched, watched where they went and I realized some incredible things, which I'm going to tell you about. And I was like, oh, well, I can't believe they did that. I can't believe they didn't watch that. So um, well, why can't they find this? And it really showed me everything that was going wrong. I knew because people were telling me, but I didn't know exactly why. And this was a brilliant tool for that. The other one, which is um, quite interesting, you can you can get people to do this. So user testing is a site where real people tends to be a lot of retired people living in Florida. So they're not always that useful and they're very often quite technologically challenged and a bit baffled. But if you get the right person, it's brilliant. So you can send them a login to your membership area to follow your onboarding um, or just see if they can work out how to use it. And they, they record a video of themselves talking about, oh, this is amazing and this is terrible. So sometimes it's great advice. Sometimes you kind of take your pick with it. Sometimes it's it, it's not great advice, but it can be useful if you get the right person. You do get to put in a profile of who you'd like as well, by the way. Um, right. So the other part of this is user interface or UI as it's known. 
So these are the user interfaces, what creates the user experience. So this is what a button looks like. Should the button be at the top of the page? Should it be at the bottom of the page? Those kind of decisions that you make. And for me, this is where I get frustrated when I'm when the, when a when a plugin system spits out a template layout and you're like ah but in, i just want the button to be up there so this is these are going to be my hacks how i've kind of made the ui work for me so a little illustration here so this is um this is where ui is based on what a designer thinks a classic ketchup bottle should look like this is better um because it's easier to use and that's what creates the user experience you know so um, it might be a classic design, but if anyone's tried to, if you're a three-year-old and you've tried to get ketchup out of a bottle, you know it doesn't ever end well. So that's why it's important to look at the UI and the UX when, and make sure that one is causing a better version of the other. Right, enough lecturing you on stuff I'm sure you probably already know. Um, I'm just put this here because I'm going to take you on a little tour. I just wanted to, this is my dashboard. Now, when I first decided to have a membership site, I joined about three other memberships and I was like, how did they do that? I love that. And I did a I proper cherry picked features. I thought that looks amazing. I want that. I love this part of my membership. And it honestly was took me weeks to, to work out how I was gonna create this magical dashboard experience. Because if you've, when you first install any kind of LMS plugin, it spits out a dashboard just with just a few links. And you're like, huh, that's not quite the, you know, or immersive experience I was hoping it would be. So I'm going to I'm going to take you on a little tour and then hopefully unlock the mysteries of how I did some of these things and um, but not before we've had a little explore. So this is the actual live dashboard. Um, now there's a couple of things I wanted people. So, so I'm going to start at the top actually though we will discuss this in more detail. You can see it's got my name. So I knew that I wanted some way of um, personalize the experience, randomizing the, the phrases at the top of the page so people felt like they were seeing something new, even if there wasn't a lot new. And um, I wanted this page to feel dynamic. So the way I did that was um, I've got what they last watched. And I've also got these ran this quote randomizer. And I often add in um, the wins that, the that my students have posted in the group. We have a Wednesday win thread. I often cherry pick a few of those. So then sometimes people see their own name popping up with a with a quote from one of their wins. So it's meant to be a fun dashboard. And this is also dashboard um, version 2.0 <laughs> because version two, version 1.0 left everyone lost and overwhelmed as we might remember. So my additions um, from, <laughs> from after my first was this, need some help. So no matter how many times you say, post a question in the group or you can do this, um, they can't find it. So um, that gives me, that takes them down. I'll show you, it takes them to, um, a help area with this is basically should I should I be filling out a ticket it's like challenging them because you don't want to be inundated with calls and tickets and it makes it clear that they can yes they can book an SOS call a 15 minute call but it kind of says but do you really need to have you been through all these steps and then if they've got a, a tech like they can't get access to their course they, they fill out a tech support ticket so that was really important that was a big turning point in having everyone endlessly posting the group help I'm stuck um the second thing was um I didn't have when we first started, I didn't have a pathway through the course for them. So this was just a load of courses um, and they didn't know where to start. So um, I added a start here pathway with the three things they should do first. And this has my, been my biggest lifesaver. I hammer them. Have you watched this? This is how to use the site. Have you watched this? It's a 10 minute video, which tells them what they can expect for the year ahead. And I don't let them. <laughs> I don't let them start properly or come into the Facebook group till they've watched that video and they tell me they've attended a welcome call and they confirm that they have indeed watched the video. <laughs> and that sounds a bit tough, but um, there's, there's a couple of things. If people don't get, I've discovered two things. If they don't join the Facebook group, I lose them. They don't convert. They will cancel their membership. If they don't ever log into the website, they will cancel it. If they don't actually start the work and if uh, or they believe it's a quick fix and they don't understand that it's a period over a period of time, you'll make great progress, but you have to commit to it. I will also lose them and, and they will cancel the membership. So all of these things I implemented after discovering that, you know, these three things. So we now have a weekly new member call. I've just got off one now. It takes me 40 minutes where well, I get to welcome them face to face. And if they don't attend the weekly new member call, we cross-reference it. Um, 
uh, at our purchase database and then I will personally email them or send them a bonjour to say, hey, I haven't seen you face to face yet and I really want to see you this month um, before it's time to renew because I want you to absolutely smash it, get on, a call, get on a personal call with me if you need it. I'm here, I want you to win. And I'm, I just basically stalk them for their first month to make sure they have taken some action. So in my first, you know, and you don't realize these things for a while because in my first, you know, how lucky was I to get hundreds of members? I was too busy firefighting all this stuff in the back end and working out how it all worked, keeping up the workload. I didn't have time to fine tune these systems till we got kind of three to six months in. And I thought, right, there's a bit, bit more churn than I'd like. There's people getting lost. It's time to step up a gear with some of these features. So these things sit here permanently, ignore that, that's another special promo thing, but the, these are my key things, need some help and getting started sit here permanently. Um, and the other thing which I, I, and I'll just give you a quick whistle stop tour, because sometimes um, people say to me, I, I mentor and help quite a few people setting up their course and membership sites. So um, I have things which, um, we have a monthly event and they don't really, they can be done in a random order, so they don't really fit into a course structure. Um, now I'm just going to drop a little hint. If the course outline had thumbnails that could be <laughs> sorted, maybe we could put them in a course structure, but I actually ended up making my own custom post type for these monthly events so people can easily um, filter and have a look at what's going on. And I also record our monthly calls. So all of that kind of ends up in this custom post type structure. And I'll show you my plugins. I use a grid plugin to make this look, look beautiful. Um, and I did the same thing again, and I I'm, I'm just wanted to show you the structure of the site, really, um, because, again, resources don't really fit into a, into a course structure. So I create another custom post type called resources, and you, you, you'll see that you can see that in the slug. So sometimes our special guests, our marketing experts come in and we make a corresponding resource to help them do that thing quicker or better. Um, and one of my top tips would be the calendar have a member calendar the number of times we st I still get asked two or three times a week at least um how do I find the link for the call when is it oh I can't believe I missed it so have a one click subscribe and we also send a, a weekly roundup on a Monday with all the links and times and we have a, events in the Facebook group with all the links and times and still people will ask and that's okay but you can do your best to mitigate mitigate that and the other my my top my other um, top question is, will this be recorded? Even though I say 15 times a day, I record everything. <laughs> so, so be prepared to ask the same question a lot. Okay, so that was just a little whistle stop tour of the inside of the membership ship site. Um, let me go back to my uh, presentation. Oh, it's still working. And while, you're, while you're doing that, I just want to ask you in the audience, what have, what have you liked so far? What's, what's the big inside? Is it the calendar? Is it the... Uh, start here course. I think that's pretty amazing. Is it the 15 minute um, getting started call? Those are all like super awesome tips. What did you all find most useful? Let us know in the chat. Yeah, I'm going to show you the back end of how I did all that, by the way, in a second. So I just want to show you what it looked like from, from a user experience point in, in the front end, but I'll reveal all in a second. Um, and I will just, um, Carla says she likes to look. I, I, I've got to tell you, most people associate learning marketing with absolute misery. So when I put the brand together, I deliberately chose really sunny colors, bright colors, fun fonts. Um, a really, our main brand image is this flamingo sitting in a puddle. And um, I'm really glad I did that. Although it didn't really fit in with the brand of my other kind of parent company, it's been really memorable. And people say they actually enjoy signing in because it feels fun and it, it doesn't stress them out. So um, that was why um, I did that. And I, and I stand by that as a decision. It was still really good. It's not quite as cool looking as I would normally. I'm quite a minimalist designer. I had fun putting it together. Right. So just to recap on that, um, you have to say the things which make them stay, you have to say again and again in different ways. So I'll tell you the different ways. So when, hang on. When they first join, this is, let me tell you about... When they first join, and I have a few custom landing pages like this, I reroute them from instead of the normal your order page, they get sent here because they're going to get their order app confirmation in the post in the email anyway. So basically, they get sent here, and I got looked at my mouse flow. I'm like, why aren't they reading the information? People were spending like no time on this 10 seconds, 30 seconds. I'm like, how can they have watched my three minute video and um, joined the group? and added the web clip on their phone and gone to the welcome area. They're not reading it. So um, the people are so excited, they click off and go and check their email confirmation to get their site login. They don't realize they're already logged in. So 
<laughs> that was something that I had to go and amend the email and also just accept, although it hurt me, they weren't going to look at and read this page. So, you know, you have to have, you have your page, you have your welcome and hopefully they'll read it. They don't, they don't actually. So you put it in the email. I then, within 24 hours, when they join, I send them a bonjour, which is a video task. It's all automated. So I get a notification on my phone. This person has purchased or joined as a member. And I go, hey, person, this is actually Melissa making a personal message for you. I'm so excited you've joined. There's a couple of key things I need to tell you. Don't forget to go to the welcome area. You're going to get an email inviting you to a call. I'm, you know, the people who show up in the group get the most out of this. Um, I'm going to come and find you if you don't do any of these things. I say it much nicer than that, but I basically send them a, a really nice personal message. Um, and then, as I've said, you know, if they don't show up at the welcome call um, in the next three weeks um, at all, I'm in with a week before they go to renew after their first month, I will be personally um, emailing them. It's probably, you know, half a dozen quick copy and paste emails a month. But I'll, I will say this is not user generated. This is me reaching out to you saying what, what's up. So um, you have to be reiterating. You have to decide what are those key triggers which lock them in. So Facebook group, logging in and experiencing some content, welcome call. So if, if they miss any of those three markers, we know they're in trouble. Um, as I said, create a high level program overview, like my getting started section. That was a lifesaver for me. Um, Personalise your onboarding. So the little human touches like um, the bonjour video. So they don't think I'm just another number. She's got tons of people in her membership. She's never going to personally reach out to me. The, the onboarding call. Um, and I would say I didn't have any, I had like a hardly had any onboarding when I first started. We've now got actually a 90 day onboarding. So um, we've got emails spread out over a two week period telling them, do you know about the live events? Do you know about this? Um, if you haven't logged in for 30 days, they get an email going, what's up? <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> my, my robot spy system tells me you haven't been logging in and I'm worried about you. Um, so that keeps going, that nurturing, we, we reach out to them if they're not engaging. Bit of a dangerous tactic. Sometimes they go, uh, thanks for reaching out. Can you cancel my membership? But actually that's fine. I don't wanna be ripping anyone off who's not getting the most value for their money. And yeah, it, it has to be multi-channel. So you have to have a calendar, you have to have Facebook events or whatever you use. You have to be sending out a roundup email, you know, they, and they're still gonna ask you and tell you they don't have the information. Um, and I would just say is, you know, keep asking them questions. I survey them on exit if they cancel their membership. I survey them when they first start. I survey my group with random casual questions, probably two or three times a month, I'll say, hey, can I get on a call with you and just see how you're finding it? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, everyone knows this in my membership, they're sick of me asking questions probably, but, you know, keep asking questions and keep listening. Because if I hadn't listened in the first um, three to six months of my membership, you know, it was, it was going to be a car crash, but I was lucky that I was able to intervene and put some systems in place that kind of stopped everyone feeling overwhelmed. Okay. Right, so I'll just see what Rob's saying. Should we hire a tech person? Rob, let me show, I'm now gonna move into the, how it's all done and then you can tell me how you, whether you still think you need a tech person. Um, so here's my essential tech stack, the stuff I can't live without. So obviously I use WordPress, self-hosted WordPress and Lifter, um, LMS. I use, now let, let's talk about carts for a second. So obviously Lifter's got its own excellent cart. Um, the reason I use WooCommerce is because I um, I like to safeguard what might happen in the future. So I, I'm about future proofing everything for me and my clients. So my scenario is what if I want to sell another thing that isn't a course in the same basket? Like I might want to sell a t-shirt or an event ticket or a, or a download or a theme. For me, WooCommerce allows me to have that multi-product um, basket experience. So that's that, but I'm someone whose business lends itself to having other downloadable products. If that's not you, um, if that's not you or your downloads are going to be part of the course, you can, you, I have in the past just made an area called um, bonus downloads and I've just stuck them as lessons. I've stuck the downloads in as lessons into a course. So you don't necessarily have to go down the WooCommerce route. It just works well with, I'm planning a live event next year. Ha ha ha. I actually was meant to be this year. But um, so with that in mind, that's why I go with WooCommerce. Um, my other thing, which is, a bit, I call this like my desert island luxury item. Um, before I discovered WP Fusion, it was like my whole system was held together with sticky tape and like two people with cups on a string. I had all these kind of plugins trying to make everything talk to each other. And um, my, 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 um, my CRM is Active Campaign, my email platform, which I love with a great passion but I couldn't extract all the data I needed. And one day, KPC, who some of you will know is the email automation queen, who um, started out working with me in my business. In fact, she just lives a few houses over in my village. 
she said to me, I found this amazing thing called WP Fusion. It sucks all of the data out of your website and puts it into active campaigns. So what, and I, I don't mind showing you a little show, I'll remind me, I'm gonna show you what it does because I can tell you what it does, but showing you is much more impressive. Um, so active campaign is my, um, my chosen auto automat automated tool of choice. When you have these two things together, what that gives you is the ability to have kind of micro actions. Like if someone completes a certain lesson called, and ours is if they complete a mini course called launch your lead magnet, it triggers a three email sequence, which offers them a, to buy um, a lead magnet template. So it gives you the ability to, and also obviously you can then have, you can send them happy messages when they, so um, you can do all that in Lifter and, bearing in mind the email notification system in lifter for achievements and certificates and is amazing right and it, what i like is because i like to make things look beautiful and it's easier to make an active campaign email look beautiful but also because everything happens in active campaign we track the, the engagement what we do it all there that's the reason i do it all over there if i wasn't at the stage where i needed to have kind of a bigger more fully evolved email platform, I would be using the native lifter tools. So, and in fact, I did for my first iteration of my course. So it's, you know, when you get bigger and you, you, you have grander ambitions, that's when to invest in the tech because it's also not cheap. Um, for my actual website builder, I use theme, I use Divi, and I'm also happily using Elementor. They both work in exactly the same way when it comes to something like lifter. Um, and the reason I use these, by the way, is to making a site look good, it, page builder is key, okay? So the optional extras that I also have to do all the bells and whistles you saw, I have cart flows. Um, you couldn't really see that, but what um, I don't like about a lot of product-based checkout systems like WooCommerce is you have to go add to cart, then you go to the cart, then you have to go to the checkout. So um, yes, you can construct a URL. I'm happy to share this with anyone. So if you hit um, a link, you can bypass the whole cart and go straight to the checkout. And it feels like a, a one-stop thing, which I did for a while, but actually I now have um, the cart, cart flows, even the free version gives you the far, jump straight to fast checkout, but the pro version gives you the ability to upsell and downsell before and after checkout. So, you know, one-time offer, as you're buying this, do you also want to buy this, that kind of thing. So that's one of my hidden tools that you couldn't see, but I use it all the time. Um, Custom post types, I already told you about. I created my library, my resource custom post type and my monthly fix and my mastermind call custom post types. So that's another plugin I use. So if anyone doesn't know what a custom post type is, anything in WordPress is a post type. A WooCommerce product is a form of post type. A blog is a form of post type. You know, anything that you, um, a lesson is a form of post type. So is a course. So this allows you to create your, create and name your own custom post types and give them their own category hierarchy at its simplest. It can do a lot more, but I, I won't bore you with it. Um, and then I pair that with something called the grid. I think it's by theme one and it's a creates beautiful grids. As you saw, um, I just, I've used it for yonks and yonks. It's not very expensive and it, you can create your own skins and make it look gorgeous. So that's what I use for displaying my custom post types and um, post viewed to get that little thing on my dashboard that said you what you last watched There's a, it's a free plugin called post viewed recently. So um, I really wanted people to easily pick up with and um, where they last left off because it's hard to remember when you've got lots of resources like you have. And there's a free plugin called Quotes Collection, which um, does my randomized quotes. Both of those things took a little bit of CSS to make look really attractive, but not a lot. So um, I also use, uh, you'll see this when we go in the back end, WordPress user notes. So there's a, in my lessons, you can click on take notes and it pops up a um, little modal where you can um, the students can write notes to remind themselves of things and then it saves them to an overall notes page in their accounts so they can review any notes that they have taken I don't know how many people use it to be quite honest I should probably go back and look at mouse flow but um, I quite like it. it doesn't you know it's no big deal to put it in there it's just a button right so why a page builder this is the the question um, I'd, it, let me know in the comments what you're using to build your site I'm really interested to know what themes you're using um, you know, are you using a theme or are you using something like elemental to theme up are you using Divi just tell me because um, I, I find it interesting yeah I can't speak for the likes of oxygen and build, beaver builder and kind of breezy and and I actually am getting quite into cadence but and I imagine it works not dissimilarly as well in terms of short code so any kind of building tool, whether it's the block builder in some form or a page builder. Yeah. Oh, Keith, you've got the dream stack there. Divi Active Campaign Lift, you're talking my language. So anyway, why a page builder? So I'm sure Chris won't mind me saying this. Out of the box, 
Um, lift to LMS styling is very simple and you do need some experience if you want to edit the native template switcher output template. So i.e. you want to move a button to a different place or a box to a different place, you're going to need some knowledge of um, rearranging PHP files and your functions PHP. And that is a bit daunting for most people who are putting together a course website. I'm not prepared to do it. I mean, I could do it. I have the skills, but um, there's an easier way to do it. Um, page builders offer theming, and that gives you the option to pick and mix the elements you want because um, short codes are your friend. Now, Lifter, more than many other systems, has got a bundle of short codes. I think you even added one. Like I made, I was like, can we have a short code for the button complete, complete lesson button? I think I was like hounding you for weeks for that. So, you know, they're very responsive to creating more short codes. So, and that allows you to do, and now I'm going to go back into here. And this is, this works the same with Elemental, by the way, they have a theme builder area. I'm just happened to be in Divi because it's my site. So what that lets you do, and I'm going to go into the lessons. And before I do that, let me go into the dashboard and I'm going to show you what a lesson looks like. So I'll go into a course. You've already seen a course actually. And Julie, to your question there, this is being recorded. We will send out a replay. Okay. Right, so if we go into here, this is actually, that's what my, that's what my course layout looks like. Um, it's very simple and I built it in the theme builder. Um, I'm not over the moon with that. What I'd really love is a grid of lessons with thumbnails and like, and I could build a welcome at the top, but for now, this will do for me, hint, hint, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> While I'm on here, I'm going to twist some arms. But once you get into here, this is my lesson layout. So, um, and I'll show you what that looks like in the back end. So I've got, um, I've got a little, I've got a little uh, sidebar here that pulls in the featured image. I've got my mark complete button where I want it. I've got a, um, my own special advanced custom field here, which I'll talk about in a second. So um, I can separate that and keep it nice and tidy. And that's my little note taking app, by the way, so you can take notes and save them, which is pretty cool that probably no one uses, I don't know. Um, but what it looks like in the back end is here is my lesson. So first you get to see that my gorgeous looking menu is actually a bit of a bodgy job. This is just columns with um, these little blurb modules in um, with an icon and a piece of text and a link. And why it looks a bit random is because um, I didn't want it was taking up to on, on mobile I wanted it to line up like that and um, that and so that gets hidden all this is grayed out and they just see that on mobile it's um, I couldn't have them having to scroll halfway down a screen with all these random icons it was too much so I've got two versions of the menu and this as you can see it's global so I can drop it in if I update it anywhere I can drop it so green means global by the way in Divi and I'm also going to show you something here in the advanced tab under visibility they have to have certain active campaign tags to be able to view that menu. So there are lots of sections in my website. If you're not logged in, you, um, you won't see any of this. And just to show you what I mean, in an incognito window. So how that happens is, um, if, if they go to log in, they will only see that. But as soon as they've logged in, they see all the menu and the dashboard and stuff like that, because it's hidden based on tags. It's WP Fusion that makes all that happen. So WP Fusion will check whether or not they've got the tags in Active Campaign and then either hide or display certain sections. And through the magic of WP Fusion, I have a personalization user meta tag there. Um, is that, Chris, I think that's WP Fusion or is it your user meta? Oh, uh, that may be ours. Yeah, it's someone's. It's yeah. basically that's that's how I personalize by having their first name pop up and depending on what page they're on um, I have a different phrase like keep going you're smashing it or you know download some something great or yeah I change them all the time just so I'm feeling a bit bored with them so what we've got here is um, placeholders so this is how you theme up something so that if I want to change all the layout of all of my lessons I can do it all in one place so if I open this up you'll see it's called um, oh that's the wrong thing those are for my videos So it just drags any, any post content that's placed in the lesson and displays it. So any notes I make, any videos I drop in, any notes. But what I actually have here are, because um, I in a lot of my lessons have more than one video and there's only one 
field in the lifter lesson to have one video and I sometimes need three videos. So what I have done, I've created my own advanced custom field using the plugin advanced custom fields and I've used a Vimeo add-on and then I've actually got up to six additional video fields. So although that means I can't use the very nifty cool features that Lifter now has for video because I'm doing it this way and I have to kind of maybe find a solution to that. Um, it means I can have more than one video in a lesson. And again, these notes, resources, FAQ, these are all advanced custom fields, okay? Um, over here, I just, this is, a, this is actually set as a featured image. All I have to remember to do in each lesson is to set a featured image. And here I've just, and this is where it starts to get fun. So in here, I've got my course outline short code and I've got my course down in this one, I've got my course progress short codes lift, taken straight from the lifter short codes page. So what I, what I wanted to highlight is you can, have, you can have any custom field you want just by adding the advanced custom fields plugin. And Elementor allows you to pull in a custom field and display it. And so does Divi just using any, any module. Like say you use the blurb module in Divi, you can, um, you can now click on the dynamic icon and pull in whatever is in that um, advanced custom field. So let me just see if, 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 is there any, we can come back to this if there's any questions. What I'm just gonna do is, so you're basically building your own lesson template using a page builder, advanced custom fields, and lifter short codes. This is it. This is it. So I, I'm kind of I'm all right with how the order of the the post navigation and the um, and the mark complete button. So I haven't felt the need to mess with that. But I could do if I wanted. I could use the mark complete button and put it somewhere else completely. Um, I just want to show you what an actual lesson looks like because you're probably thinking, how does this all? Well, you're probably not thinking. <laughs> In case you want to know how this all works, I'll use this one because we're familiar with it. Edit lesson. So I'm just using the standard block builder in the back end. So I'm not activating my Divi builder or building the page with um, Elementor. I will never want to do that because if I, I want to be able to change all the layout of all my lessons all in one fell swoop. So I let that take care of itself. I don't actually put any um, anything up there, but um, I don't put anything in the in the um, lesson settings either. I don't I don't use the native lift of video integration, but um, I, I wish I could if it had more than one video. But I, you can see here's my advanced custom fields that I created over in the ACF plugin settings. So I've got up to six videos. All I have to do is put the Vimeo link in. Then here's my, um, that's if I need to embed anything extra. This only shows up if, and by the way, these fields only show up on the front end if I put something in them. Uh, so I've got notes, resources, if I want to link to downloads and stuff. Um, if I want to embed an FAQ from um, Airtable, I can do it there. If I want to put a special promo, when I've got, say, um, a free, uh, this, we give away a free pixel lesson as a lead magnet, um, I can put a promo image to encourage them to sign up in the bottom. So for me, that combination of ACF, uh, Advanced Custom Fields, the Page Builder, Short Codes, the Thema, it's just magic. You can basically make your lesson however you want it to be. And of course, the beauty of being in that FEMA area is that you can use the, the controls to, um, to set the type, the colors, just like you normally would if you're building a page. So for me, that was my crafty way of getting around. And this is why I'm so short code thirsty. I'm always on it, like can we have more short, short codes. That's why, because you can take complete control of how it's all laid out. Right, um, I... Katrina or Katrine has a question about the advanced custom fields plugin, um, what you use it for. Like we were, we were just looking at a lesson where you could see how Melissa could add all those custom lesson components, but it was all controlled from one place yeah. where she was using integrating advanced custom fields with the template. I don't know if you have another way to help describe it. I know some people as they're getting into understanding what advanced custom fields does, myself included, it took me a while for it to really click. And then I was like, okay, I get it now, but can you help? Yeah, so let's yeah. go and look at it. So here I am in an advanced custom field and you get to create um, field groups. So I've created um, one for lesson. I actually can't remember what that's about. But I've created one, a different one for my monthly fixes and I've created a different one for my lesson. So if you go into the lesson one, what, what you've just seen, um, here we go. Um, What you've just seen is like those are those are the fields one to six. Here they are. 
one to six. And if I open this up, this is I, this video field. Um, I got an, an add on from I think it was a free add on from advanced custom fields for Vimeo so that it displayed Vimeos just by putting an ID. So this is just saying um, wherever I create this, this hang on, I'm going to move away. Here we go. I'll close field. So I've got six video fields. I've got the standard embed, the notes, resources, the FAQ embed, the promo image, which you've seen on the front end. So all I'm doing is creating them. And when you when you create them, if we look at this notes one, for example, you have loads of things that you can choose. So you can choose um, text, a number, password, like a radio button. I pretty much always go for the what you see is what you get editor because it gives you freedom to upload an image or to um, change heading tags. If SEO is important to you, you can change heading tags and you can do things and style type and stuff like that. But I have used other things like Google Maps and date pickers when I've needed to. But um, that's the one I tend to use in this scenario. And what you can see down here is if I just close this field, all of these advanced custom fields, I'm saying show them in the back end of the, of the lesson um, if it's a lesson. So show this field group if the type of post is equal to a lesson. And just to really explain, you know, I said I created my own custom post types, like for my monthly fix events. So well, this, this is something you built from scratch. This isn't a lifter component. You created this custom post type from scratch. Yeah. But if the post type is equal to um, fix, um, show these show these fields, okay? But what it does, ACF does pick up everything like courses, lessons, membership. So it's fully integrated with Lifter LMS. That's the beauty of it. It picks up any post type. So that, you know, that's awesome. So that means for your course, you could have some advanced custom fields. For your membership, you could have some advanced custom fields and you're just gonna do your own layouts how you want them in the theme area and pull in your, your custom fields. And so, so that, that's the three that, so I'll just, I'm going to go back because I think it's worth just doing this just to show. So here in the lessons back again, and I have got slightly outdated technology here in a sense, because um, you can see all these populating. These are, um, That's pulling in the field for video one, because that's what you see first at the top of my lesson. There's, that's how it corresponds. And if we just view this. I actually don't ever put anything in the post content in a lesson. So if there was more than one video, I'd, it, they would stack them up one, two, three. Um, but in the theme builder, all I have to do is and actually, this is an old add-on. So actually, I could just choose, a. I just haven't had time to change it over since Divi updated to be compatible with advanced custom fields. But there's a little drop down. So this is where I choose the advanced custom field that I need. So video one. Um, so there's now actually a, you can do any text, post, any, anything that contains text in Divi, like a blurb or a text module, you can actually have this little dynamic button, which um, can hook up to your, pull it and pull in your advanced custom field. So um, for anyone who's like going, oh my God, this is like, this is not, this is way too much information. I actually have a tutorial on custom post types and advanced custom fields and how they work together, which I will be very happy to link you to. It's in my free group. So don't get overwhelmed. Just know that it can be done, I would say <laughs> at this stage. Know that you can create your own post types, know that you can create your own fields and arrange them using some kind of thema. You can do it in the elemental thema. You can certainly do it in Divi. Cool, right. So I, I'm, I hope everyone's going, oh my God, I want to cry. I hope it's not. Oh, this is awesome. So like for you, a fix is, it's kind of, it's like a webinar, right? Yeah. So, so, if, so if you want to create a custom post type for a webinar and what do you, you want, like a video and maybe um, some, a resource download area or something like that, you can kind of create your own, hey, this webinar is series is part of the membership kind of thing. That's what you did. Yeah, this is it. Like some one of my Shelly, who you might have seen posting in the group, she's managing a membership site for a, um, a Vietnamese chef, and so he she's using custom, custom post types to create a recipes area because they, they don't really need to be sequential. She wants people to see a visual thumbnail and think, oh, I want to make that. So that's a really good use case for when it's a good idea to make create use a custom post type. But you know, as I said, you don't have to. In the past, I've just put them inside a course. And um, you know, it's just hard to present that as a grid. If you, so I'm not gonna dwell on that. Anyway, in terms of personalization, so the things that I, I want you to take away from that is use some visual engagement tracking like the last thing you watched. 
that's a really good example of something which is not only is it visually appealing, it's really good user experience. So like that's so helpful um, and put it somewhere prominent. So I make it fun with the randomized quotes, I, with the um, putting their name at the top of the site. So when they log in, they see their name and they never know quite what it's going to say. Um, and also, you know, that the personalization, you know, the phone call, the mini video, the bonjouro, all of that, the checking in with them, even though, and also, I also, my emails, if I check in with them after 30 days or they haven't logged in, it will say, hey, it actually says, you okay, hun? This is Melissa's stalky robot thing, checking in on you, not the real Melissa. If you're sunning yourself in the Caribbean, you know, my bad, but I just want to make sure you're okay. So I always let them know it's not real me, but loads of people reply to it by going, thank you, robot Melissa. I'm actually fine. I'm just a bit snowed under at work. And then I always personally reply to them saying, thanks, just wanted to check up on you. So I try and make it fun and keep it lighthearted. And just all of those different ways of building the relationship constantly, like, you know, repeating information so they don't feel lost and, you know, making sure they've got things like, taking notes you know it's a bit like when you're on an airplane you're like oh you're being looked after you're in first class you know they're constantly putting down a new drink or a napkin or it's just kind of anticipating problems they, they might have and smoothing the way right is everybody is everybody okay <laughs> i just wanted to make sure um before we go to questions because we've got i i'm not in any hurry to go anywhere i just wanted to tell you um, if you're a bit bamboozled by this, um, I've got a free mini course. It covers WooCommerce and it covers Lifter LMS. If you go to the marketingfix.co forward slash learn, um, and it's got all my, in fact, you can, you can see it right here, actually. I'll just show you what you can do, which might jumpstart you if you're thinking of getting into theming your, your layouts and your stuff. It's, um, you can then experience the back end of this site. You can experience my onboarding. I'll try and upsell you to become a member. That's all automated. So you can see how it all unfolds. You don't have to, by the way, but I just, you'll be able to see behind the scenes. But you get all of the, um, my Divi, my Lift to LMS page and lesson layouts. So you can just swipe them and stick them straight in your theme builder, which is why I wanted to just show you that. Um, yeah, that's there. If I've got a, two really detailed blog posts about using Lift to LMS on my blog, if you've got any questions, you can put my free group, the Design Space Lounge is there for you. Um, obviously, you're very welcome. We inside my membership, we have a course creators and membership site pod where um, we meet once a month for live teaching and how and strategizing on your. So we have we've got so many course creators now. We have a dedicated little pathway for that, um, and I also have a in the my design space store i have a theme with all of this done for you which is um for L lift for lms and the elemental version of that is coming out in the next week or so right that is that is it from me i'm sure we'll post all these links somewhere so i don't have to keep sharing my screen yeah that was wow melissa that was awesome i love what you said at the beginning about um i think it was wix or squarespace or something like wordpress is harder but it's infinitely more powerful or something like that do you remember what you said it was, uh, and if this seems a little overwhelming, like we're look, we're going into more advanced, but this is the cool thing about WordPress is you can, all right, you want to do it a little differently or you want to customize, you want to do all this theming stuff. You can go further. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Lo love where you're going there. Um, yeah, everybody, uh, let us know what you love most about this presentation. And this is your opportunity also to ask questions. Um, while you're typing in the chat, I just wanted to ask you, Melissa, what, what's the, um, you had like a SOS 15 minute call thing. So if you're doing a membership site or a coaching program, I, th I think that's really cool. Like I see a lot of people try to automate everything and just kind of disappear and fade into the background as the bank account fills up or something. But you're like, Hey, I'm here to support you. I'm not going to let you fail. Like, can you tell us about that? Like what, what's up with the 15 minute SOS call? Well, do you know what? I probably do get about one a month. And the reason why is I actually give, there's plenty of other avenues first to get one-to-one -one help. So I onboard them with a welcome call. My big thing, which has been a game changer is every single week on a Tuesday from one till 4 p.m., which covers both time zones, um, I do co-working. So everyone shows up like this with their cameras on and they turn their sound off and we just get work done. But at any time you can put your hand up and go, Melissa, I'm stuck. And you, I take them into a side room for 10, 15 minutes and I solve their problem there and then. So that weekly co-working gives me this chunk of three hours where every single week they can get one-to-one -one help and coaching. And I just block that off in my diary. I know it's that's what's going to happen. But what that does is concentrate everybody's little stuck questions into one block of time for me. 
We've now just started using the final hour of co-working to have pods. So if I, have a, if I do a live event, the following week in that final hour, we do a Q&A regarding what we learned. Just done that now. Then I have three other pods. I have web designers who are next week. The week after I've got course creators and membership site owners. Then I've got um, service-based businesses like photographers and copywriters, et cetera, where I do a little bit of 10 minutes of teaching. Then we talk about what's going on in the industry, who's got problems they need solving. So, and, and we have a monthly mastermind call. And I always say to people, the new members welcome call. If you are a stuck member, that is also open to you. Show up to that. That happens once a week. So effectively, I'm blocking off five hours a week, definitely, of yeah. serving the community. But at least it's concentrated. I know it's going to happen. Time um, boxed. Yeah. Time boxed. So actually, the number of people who need an SOS call are one a month, maybe. So because I, you're I, doing all that scalable group support, which is awesome. That is that's su super cool. Uh, we got a question, and before you answer it, it's about what server spec or hosting do you use to make this possible? S certain things like web hosting, CRMs, page builders are like religions, and people got, have like all these different thoughts about it. But what's just, I mean, feel free to name what you do for hosting or whatever, but what's your, what's your take on web hosting if it's going to be a membership or site like this? Well, it's hard for me to say because I actually have about, I run about 50 sites because I sell templates. So I've got about 30 you know, demo sites. I've got my main site, my design space site, I've got this one. So you're um, a power user of web hosting. Yeah, so I'm, yeah. I'm a site round cloud. So okay. I'm probably paying, everyone's going to like, what? I probably pay about 250 quid a month, like GB pounds a month. But, you know, I don't rent an office. I don't have a shop. This yeah. is not, this is not, you know, going to break the bank. I consider that my investment. And I probably spend the same again on um, backup systems as well. So, for my, my, my cost for hosting and backup and being able to sleep at night is around 500 pounds, about $700 a month. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, there is a cost to doing business. Like, um, cost as you scale. So someone, uh, Carla was asking about the, the plugins you use, you kind of mentioned the essential and then the nice to have list. Uh, mm -hmm. is there any other plugins that you just really recommend that make the magic happen on your site? Well, I went through, when I was putting this together, couple of days ago I did go through my plugins and those were the ones um the thing for me that makes it all seamless oh I know what I was going to show you is the is the lifter active campaign uh this is active campaign and um WP fusion and I'm gonna yep. just use I who's here Mich let's see who's here who, who won't mind so we're inside <laughs> Melissa's Michelle, Michelle, because she's one of my members, and I know she's <laughs> in her account. So is this is Active that? Campaign we're looking at. This is Melissa's Active Campaign account, which is also no. what I use. I use Active Campaign as well. All right, Michelle says no problem. So I've got. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for playing along, Michelle. Because yeah. what I want you, this is so powerful, um, and it gives me so much information. And um, this, look, look how, look at this rich amount of information. So these are all the ways she's been tagged. So I can see she is an affiliate. She's bought my Smarter Facebook Ads course. She has bought templates. She's been through, um, she's a customer. She was a founder of a first member. She's an annual member. She's, um, she's, she's and he's all the, the kind of, so she, I'm, I'm in, check, tracking her engagement. I can see, um, I can see which I, I create Facebook audiences, which are automatically pushed through to Facebook based on my best engaged people. I create different audiences from them. So they're sitting there waiting for me in Facebook. And the better I track the engagement, the better I cull my list, the better my Facebook audiences are. And I don't even have to do anything. They course correct themselves. But when we get down here, you'll see, I can see people's lifetime revenue. I can see the payments they've made. I can see what emails they've had. It's all tied together. My WooCommerce is synced. But over here, wait till you see this will blow your mind. You can see the site tracking. I can see that um, yesterday, Michelle went to look at something on the support site. I can see that she's um, logged into her affiliate area. I can see she's been browsing some of the designs in my store, looking at support. I can see she hasn't been logging into the course very much. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. She, she went and did a lesson on the Divi Builder a month ago. So it means that anytime anybody hits any of these things, I can set up an automation. If anyone even 
logs into this lesson, this, uh, this thing should happen, you know, so it's the ultimate in segmentation. Okay. And, and, you know, for me, if someone says to me, oh, I got this email or why can't I see my, see this, I can just see everything. I can see where they are. Or if I think, you know, have they got a tag to say they join the Facebook group? Have the, I can see it at a glance. I can see if I'm going to perform a personal intervention, like someone's on a trial, a one pound trial, and they, I'm worried they're not going to convert. They've not joined the Facebook group. They've not logged in. I can just go and see that. So I can write to them and go, dear so-and-so, um, I don't mean to, I always, I don't mean to, I, I don't mean to creep you out, but I've been doing <laughs> yeah. account and I can see, and I'm worried about you. You know, you paid a, one whole pound and I want you to get the most out of it. What's going on? Let's jump on a call. So I can, I can do very targeted sales. And I'm sorry to say you still have to hustle. Even though I've got a healthy membership, I'm still hustling to convert people and making, putting in the, the hours there with the sales. A hundred percent. Katrine's got a question. Um, I'm just going to rephrase it a little bit. Like if someone, what, what would be the first instance where somebody, where the custom fields plug in advanced custom fields would be a fit? Like, let's say they, they're, they want to, they're, they want to do something above and beyond what a lifter LMS lesson template has out of the box kind of thing. Like when, when do you, when would, what would be the tipping point would be like, you should get that plug in. So this, this was, this will be a really good example. Um, I really wanted to have a really beautiful notes field below and then a separate, I wanted another field that said um, downloads, or I think it says resources. And then on some of our lessons, there's an embed from um, an FAQ that we, we keep updated over in Airtable. And I wanted these to be all separate. So I tried to do it in the block builder and it looked terrible and I couldn't style it nicely. So once I started doing this theming, uh, and I already used advanced custom fields for blog posts and stuff, so I knew how it worked. And I thought, hmm, maybe I can make it work here. So that's what I did. So I like I like it for adding extra um, functionality, uh, sucking in, um, for, for creating separate areas and just making it look nice, to be honest with you. And that means when I'm actually doing a lesson, it's really easy. I just go, oh, notes, right, um, you know, download the cheat sheet here. And I know it's going to appear nicely all formatted with the, by the builder below my lesson exactly where I want it. That's awesome. We've got a question from Boyd about uh, the Buddy oh, Boss theme. I wasn't sharing my screen. Sorry. I just demonstrated that. Oh, <laughs> um, Boyd is, it just has a question about uh, the Buddy Boss theme, which is like a, a, it's like a Facebook on your WordPress website kind of theme and plug-in combo. You chose to use a Facebook group. I'm sure at some point you considered like buddy press or buddy boss. And then you ultimately decided with Facebook and I know community is important to you. You said one of the things that activates people is them joining the community and then people support each other and whatnot. How do you think about community and why did you choose to roll it on Facebook? Well, for me, because I came from the niche I did with photographers, literally photographers are in more groups than any other type of user. I know like because photographers and, uh, and or I extend that to any other creative business tend to be lone workers at home. So we gather in groups to, to chat and network and not feel so alone by being in Facebook groups. Um, we say, everyone says, oh, but all my clients are on Instagram, but we don't really mean it because we're actually busy hanging out chatting in Facebook groups. So <laughs> yeah. whether you are an artist or an Etsy maker or a performer, you I guarantee you're hanging out in a Facebook group. I... I have a, I also have a big Facebook group. Um, it's got about 8,000 people and that's a big feeder for my membership. So it's a natural progression for them to move from one Facebook group to the other. And it's just, I know that, I just know that they're all on Facebook. Um, I, it might change in the future. I'm not, I'm not averse to it, but I'm in an, I'm in another membership where they tried to make, recently tried to make everyone, and this is a, just a marketing membership. They tried to make everyone go onto their new. Somewhere group. else. Yeah. And no, no one went about three people like, uh, I went there, but there was no one there. And it was like, yeah, I'm not going. <laughs> you know, yeah. No one wants another app. Everyone's already on Facebook anyway. So I do get the odd person who says, I just don't do Facebook. And I'm like, well, cool. Maybe just do it just for this. Or don't, you, you know, you still, you'll still get, you still come to calls, still come to co-working. But yeah, it just really works for my, my user profile. My, my learner profile is Facebook aware and keen to learn about Facebook ads and keen to learn about how to monetize groups. So yeah, I teach a lot for Facebook marketing too. Uh, awesome. Well, thanks for that. Uh, Katrine is also asking, um, it looks like you're using Vimeo. Uh, yeah. What was the extra plugin you needed or what else do you need to do to get Vimeo into your site? Because you can just drop a link and it'll display wherever you put it. Like what else are you doing with Vimeo? 
Well, back when I first started doing this, actually, the block builder was didn't have all the cool in bed stuff. So I'm need to do a bit of an overhaul. We're coming up to two years since I built this. So it's entirely possible that could become redundant and I could just drop the extra lessons into um, what I'd love is a great like a video carousel with the thumbnails so people can work through the videos and you know, they've got all the timestamps and all the intervals. So I, but I'm not aware that I'd love to, I'd much rather use the native lifter video, but I've, I've historically got quite a few lessons with several videos. I think what I might try is dropping them as an embed straight into a Gutenberg block and see what happens. So it's entirely possible I could get rid of that. If you like, I will check and report back. That's cool. Um, you mentioned uh, it's kind of a two part question. The first part is you dropped in and you got like 300 or so people in your launch. What's, what was the secret or seek, what were the main things that contributed to that kind of like traction? I'll start that. And the second part just has to do with like, uh, basically you said things, you, you were having some user experience issues and you had to retool it. And then you just said just a moment ago, like it's been two years, I think I'm gonna redo everything again. And we find that people who have these successful platforms, they're, they're iterating a lot. Like it wasn't just launch and done. So first you had a good launch and then you continue to improve it. Tell us some words of wisdom on that path. Okay, so the first thing I have to tell you is, um, I already had quite a big list. When we launched Marketing Fix, I had about 15,000 people on my list. So that's proper cheating. Um, but in that case, It's not cheating, it's just where you were. I mean, you, you had already been building, giving, adding value and giving things away and stuff like that, right? That came from, um, I built my list to probably about 10,000 people by selling the templates and spending a lot of money running traffic to lead magnets on Facebook. And that took my list from organically from about 200 people to um, about 10,000 over a period of three years. I then launched a course. As I said at the beginning, I realized people didn't know how to use my templates that well. So I launched a course and about a thousand people went through that course over the next couple of years. So I then had a, I had a pretty good base of um, my, my Facebook group was growing. I was pushing people, you know, in, onto my list all the time. Uh, so I, I knew that a quite a percentage of those would, would convert. I also then, so that, that is one thing, but I, I had an eight week runway and the eight week runway was really important. So I created a series of five emails and those five in one of the tasks, they were, they're called five minute fixes. One of them was to a little thing on stepping into your own authority as your business owner and changing your personal Facebook banner. And I gave them a Canva template to do it. And it went a bit viral in the photography community, like in the lead up to the launch, like I must have seen hundred photographers on my friends list change their Facebook banner and they all look very similar. So everyone's like, what is going on? Is there some kind of cult? No, no, Melissa's launching the marketing thing. So I had a huge word of mouth from that. So having that little viral task was brilliant. It was a real FOMO going on. So I did the launch and I built up, I built it up and I launched, I launched to previous students with a webinar, a private one where I answered all their questions because that was a bit of a sticky point. Like, how do I say to people who bought a lifetime thing? I did say, you still have lifetime license for your course forever, but I'm going to give you an absolute cracking deal if you want to become a member as well. And uh, it's absolute steal. So they all got grandfathered in at a lifetime price. So that got it off to a good start. And then um, we did the live launch public and I've been, I spent quite a bit on Facebook ads to drive people to the live webinar and um, it just went crazy. And, it, and I think there was something like the way it looked like bright and sunny and people were just overwhelmed by and people live. It, it just hit the right note. It just seemed like a solution that was simple. Um, and and we, we, went, we did that first week, we did 250 members. Then the second couple of months, we added about 50 members a month. And then it was March and then there was a pandemic. So yeah. <laughs> we got a bit stuck. So um, how, how do you keep iterating and improving it without exploding or whatever? Like, how do you uh, stay sane? And, you know, it takes a, sometimes it takes a hit and it can be frustrating when people are like, oh, I can't find this thing or whatever. And you're, you're like, I got to make it easier. I got to keep improving it and banish overwhelm myself. <laughs> how, do you, how do you keep going? Um, before I answer that, Boyd just says, um, that's not the URL, Boyd. It, it's not, that's not mine. It's wantthemarketingfix.co will take you to my site. That's why you can't access it. It's not the right URL. Um, so how do you keep iterating? So first of all, it, you have to prioritize what's, um, you know, that kind of urgent versus important. So in the early days when people were saying they were overwhelmed and they, they, they didn't have, they, people were messaging me, I, I don't think this is for me. It's, 
I thought I have to do something at this radical about this right now. And it doesn't matter that I haven't finished a course over here. It doesn't matter that I haven't, you know, got my funnel up and running or finished the onboarding. I have to fix this right now. So you just have to listen, you know. So I, I dived in, started recording the welcome video, the read this, the start here, the, the, the welcome call. And it stopped that problem dead in its tracks. And um, I'm so glad it did because then I thought, oh, I can relax now. I've put these measures in place and it's fixed it. You know, it's not perfect, but it's working really well. Now I can go double back and start testing lesson layouts and all those kind of, and adding, you know, have I got the right thing for my calendar and, you know, all the fine tuning. But um, in terms of iteration, um, I'm always listening. So we've just done, we did a big challenge in October and this is, you know, six months into the current world situation, people are saying, you know, photography is screwed. A lot of people haven't shot a wedding for two years. Um, they're like, I'm having to, I'm going to have to launch a new business. I've got a business idea. I'm going to pivot. Have you got any information? Have you got any content on that? So I wrote a whole new mini course. We did a challenge, use that to drive a lot of new members in. So it's just listen, listen, listen to what people need. You know, um, uh, you know people wanted accountability. So we've got the pods. So just listen, listen, listen. And, you know, some things, as, and I've also, when I introduce something like the pods, I can, we were also doing a replay, like a hosted replay the night, of, the night after a live fix, but there was only like eight to nine people turning up. So I thought, do you know what? I'll can that and I'll put, pour all my energy into the co-working. So try new things. Like I, I'm doing, I'm do, this year I'm doing quarterly accountability, uh, quarterly planning sessions for people who've become an annual member as a perk. And I fully said, look, this is new. Uh, and the pods thing is new. This might not work. You might all hate it, but you know, once you have, if you, and also be very honest with your membership, don't ever try and hide anything. I always say to them, I literally do not know the answer to that, but I'm going to get an expert to come in and tell us this, or I don't know if this pods thing is crazy. We, we might not work, but let's give it a whirl. And then, you know, you're going to be saying, does this work for you? What do you want to do better? How do you feel about this? So um, everyone knows I bore them silly with my questions, but it, it's important to know how people are feeling. That's awesome. Can you pull up that slide one more time with the uh, links and where to go and stuff as we wrap up here? And while, while you're doing that, um, we just had a question about Lifter and Active Campaign. Uh, Lifter doesn't have an add on for that. Uh, once WP Fusion rolled out their add on or their plugin for integrating Lifter with Active Campaign, uh, that's kind of the, the standard that, that people uh, use now. And, and since that solution is so awesome, it's not a high priority on our list to, to make that one ourselves. But uh, Melissa, I wanna thank you for this fantastic presentation. I'm gonna go back and watch this. There's so many uh, hard won lessons in there. If you're here live, uh, we are gonna send out the replay uh, within a day or so, so you'll, you'll get that. Can you tell us again what, what's at these uh, three places here? Yeah, so the marketingfix.co learn is the free mini course. Um, and you will be also if you um i'm also gonna just how about tell see me. she's iterating on the fly right here she's adding yeah. to it. <laughs> it's, mini, it's, it's completely free mini course it'll give you access to the back end of the site in a limited way as a student rather than a member and you'll see how it all works you can work grab my free divi layouts um there's two really detailed blog posts about how i use lifter on the blog um you can come and ask me questions in the design space lounge and Which is your uh, Facebook group, right? This one. If you look for the Design Space Lounge on Facebook, it's that one. But yeah. also, if you, if you, and by the way, you can use this. You can use the Welcome 20 if you want 20% off um, my Lifter theme. And if you're 100% if you're sold and you want to join the membership, you can join for a pound for your first month with this one as well. For just one pound for your first month. Awesome. Melissa... I want to uh, thank you for coming on and doing this presentation today. That is, uh, you've, you've added a ton of value. Thanks for being a, uh, such a great example of um, a dedicated person who's serving their tribe uh, with the tool, with WordPress and, you know, Lifter and the tools that you use to, you know, add value and help others out there in the world, all over the world. It's really impressive to watch and to see how you've iterated over the years um, and just continue to learn and grow. It's awesome. So, well, uh, yeah. Absolute pleasure. And listen, if you guys have any, I don't know whether you're going to put a thread in the group, but if you want to put a thread in the group, I yeah. you can tag me and ask me questions. If you want me to 
write a blog post about something you're not sure about, or if you want me to record a little video, personal video for you, let me know and um, I will do that because um, I, I can even create some videos around your questions and add them to the free mini course. So um, just let me know. We can maybe have a little after thread in the group or something and feel free to share some questions at, at me as you like. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to tag you. And for those of you that are here at the end, uh, we are going to draw our winner here in just a sec. So it is Carla M. You're the winner of the free year of the Lifter LMS add-on, the $99 add-on. So we got a, um, just shoot us an email to team at lifterlms.com. We'll hook you up with your winning. So congratulations on that. Melissa, thanks so much to, for coming to us across the pond here. And uh, thank you, Kathy, for helping put this on. I want to thank everybody who's on the call or watching this later for showing up and investing in your own learning, uh, exploring what it's like to build a high value membership site like this uh, with great user experience. I loved it. Thanks, Melissa. Thank hope, you. Yeah, hope, take care. I hope everybody has a great rest of your day.